Rona Mackay, followed by Annie Wells. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This is a debate I sincerely wish we weren't having in the Chamber today. Domestic abuse is repugnant at every level, and that's why I'm pleased that the Scottish Government is introducing the Domestic Abuse Bill to show just how seriously we take our, our zero tolerance approach. It's an important part of the Government's approach to tackling violence against women and children as set out in the Equally Safe Strategy. It will ensure that the true nature and severity of domestic abuse is recognised at every level, physical and, crucially, emotional and psychological abuse. Presiding officer, until recently, there's been a common misconception that domestic abuse is just physical abuse. We've all seen the posters of battered and bruised women in the campaigns over the years. That's why I'm pleased that the Scottish Government has recognised that abuse can be psychological too, which conceals bruises that are just as painful but far more difficult to detect. Domestic violence exists in all sections of our communities across all levels of society. Abusers and victims can be male or female, any race or religion, and from all types of background. As we've heard, some 60,000 incidents are reported to police in Scotland each year, of which 79% involve a female victim and a male perpetrator. Shockingly, the number of women in prisons who have suffered brain injuries is almost double to that of men, and it's known that domestic violence is to blame. Mental and emotional abuse includes threats, including threats of violence, criticism of appearance and intellect, name-calling, controlling what you do, where you go, how you dress and who you speak to. And the cowardly abuser knows no bounds. They'll threaten your children, isolate you from friends and family, accuse you of being unfaithful, threaten to out your sexual orientation to family, friends or employers, and much, much more. It's all about control, controlling by fear, and children are often the forgotten victims of domestic violence. Children who cry when they hear someone laugh because they think the fighting has started again. Children's innocence stolen by a brutal, inadequate coward intent on expressing themselves through violence. Research has shown that children in a home where the mother is being abused are also at greater risk of being abused themselves. The ways in which children can be harmed by domestic abuse, which are wider than, are wider than simply witnessing the abuse itself. The trauma is long-lasting and far-reaching. Giving evidence in domestic abuse cases or in any court setting can be extremely stressful and traumatic for children, and I'm fully supportive of Children First Manifesto to radically change the way in which they do this. And this is something my colleague John Finney was alluding to. However, this subject merits an entire other debate, which I hope we'll have in this chamber sooner rather than later. But there are measures that we as a government can take to help adult victims of domestic abuse by giving them greater access to justice. As the Cabinet Minister outlined, the Scottish Government is making huge changes to the status quo through the work of the Equally Safe Justice Expert Group, which is developing an action plan which will look at both medium and longer term improvements that can be made to the justice system for all victims of this type of violence. In today's news that the UK government has confirmed that refugee, refugees will be exempt from changes to the housing benefit cap until 2019 and from the 1% rent reduction, which will ensure that refugees remain financially sustainable and crucially open for women and children fleeing violence. The Scottish government has committed a welcome boost to tackle the scourge of domestic abuse across Scotland. The funding has allowed additional investment to boost resources for our courts and prosecutors by 2.4 million each year to ensure there are no undue delays in court waiting times for domestic abuse cases. Of course, we have excellent organisations we have been talking about today who offer support to victims such as Women's Aid, Scottish Domestic Abuse Helpline, Rape Crisis Scotland, to name but a few. Incidentally, visit any of their websites and you will see the chilling statement, click here to leave this site quickly. And that surely speaks volumes about fear and control. In Eastern Bartonshire, for example, Women's Aid offers support information and advice on welfare rights and benefits, housing options and legal issues. They offer refuge accommodation for women and their children, an outreach service for children and young people and follow-on support for women after they leave the refuge. Women's Aid groups throughout Scotland are dealing with around 25,000 new cases of, of, of abuse and help children and, and young people through this crisis every year, and that's a chilling statistic. As my colleague uh, Fulton McGregor uh, highlighted, homelessness is also exacerbated by domestic abuse. 46% of women have been made homeless more than once because of domestic, sexual, or, domestic or sexual abuse, 39% more than twice. 
When women left their family home, they, move house, they often move house multiple times, which leaves them feeling isolated from friends, neighbours and belongings, and they have to, often have to cope with huge financial debt. The abuse often continues even after they've moved out of their home. But most women don't feel they have a choice about moving out because, like all refugees, it was unsafe for them to stay. Women's Aid would like to see the onus put on the perpetrators of violence to move out of the home rather than the women and children, which I have to say I agree with. Presiding officer, you cannot put a price on what these organisations do for the victims of domestic violence. Scotland is leading the world with the work now being done in tackling domestic abuse. I know that realistically our work may never be done, but I'm convinced that our determination to tackle this vile problem will have a positive impact as we work to rid our country of this hateful crime. Annie Wells.